everybody. Hello, that's me. I can see my back of my screen. So thank you very much um, and uh, welcome to everybody. Uh, but also thank you for giving up you know, part of a really important uh, business day, I guess, for, for, for everybody. So I am delighted to present this um, on behalf of Locality, a webinar about community buying. Um, and of course, I am from Community Buying Unlimited. I'm the founder of that organisation. So I'm very excited to get uh, to get started. And uh, as uh, uh, Luke said, and I've got to thank Luke for for getting a, a real philistine when it comes to technology through um, actually working out how to use this thing. Um, so I've got to thank Luke for setting this up. And I'll crack on straight on with uh, the title on the page, and that is, "Can Community Buying Change the Way We Buy Stuff in the UK?" Here's a question. Okay, so yeah. change, it's all about change. What I'm hoping today is literally to get you to think very differently about something that we all take for granted, something that every one of us does every single day, and that's buy stuff. And the way I'm going to get some change think thinking is to literally try and flip your thinking about how, how we can achieve that. All right, so a story in pictures, but I'm going to start with a few words first. Why it's important how to do it, what to buy, how much could actually be saved, where are the benefits in it for the community, and what are the communities, and then finally a roadmap, because our, every time I work with locality, which has been a, a, a number, and I adore working with locality at the symposiums and with the community organizers and the action camp, every time people come to me and say, want to get started, how do I do it? Then they go away and they kind of get left. So I'm going to give you a roadmap at the end of this. All right. I don't know if anybody knows what that is, apart from the fact that it's got a big building and it's a football stadium and a, an events area with the name Rico on it. So it's the Rico Stadium. That is what uh, a new comedy we're playing there. A 31,000 people seat a stadium just above and it's round full on a, on, a, on, a, on a cold wintry night when people are enjoying their football. Here's an interesting stat for you. I'm talking about winter excess deaths. I'm talking about the stats from last winter. I'm talking about the fact that we're really good at working out how people, how many people die in a winter after they've died. We're just appallingly bad at obviously stopping from doing that. And that's just extraordinary. So here's the sobering thought. That's the empty Rico Arena. Those seats would have been emptied by those 31,000 people that died last winter. Community buying, quite simply, flips business models and it can help change exactly that and it's that sort of thing that makes me on a daily basis angry or excited and I believe that a different world cannot be built by indifferent people so there is no indifference in this uh, I am full on and sometimes I am angry and sometimes excited but the most important thing is that I really want to ask some questions why do we let stuff like energy just happen to us? When I was looking at this about four, four and a half years ago, as my background is a sustainability consultant and I was working in various different countries, I was looking at how you could actually do something very, very locally uh, to impact on a, on a, hopefully, a global basis. And I was listening to a speech by this man. Uh, he was an awful lot grayer, uh, less, less gray than, than he is now. And what was really interesting is the speech that afternoon um, which impacted his own economic policy because he needed oil to drop in price so growth would continue, actually impacted our own rural energy costs about three days later with it as it filtered through. And it, wonder, it, it, it made me wonder, why, why do we let such grand things happen and just happen to us? And then I started researching and I found that communities all over the planet choose not to let stuff, stuff just happen to them. And I call this when a community decides. And what's really interesting is, of course, I'm doing this on behalf of locality, and locality is all about when a community decides, lots of different communities getting together to, to create extraordinary change. And um, so it fits perfectly with, uh, with working with locality. So, hmm. Before we get started, let's see. Let's do a poll, and I'm going to hand over to, to Luke to control this. But I just want to see where we're up to on what we think can actually happen. Can community buying actually change the way we buy stuff in the UK? So over to you, Luke, if you want to open that poll and let people actually vote on 
what they think. Now, of course, in the midst of it is a wait and see because you might not know what I'm talking about or you might only have a slight interest. Um, but I'd be very, very interested to know what the outcome of this result is. So I'm guessing that you guys are voting as we speak. And I can see that, um, oh, it's very interesting. It's a very interesting split. All right, well, I'm, I'm very excited that we've, we, we've, only got, um, we've only got results that, that come from wait and see upwards. Um, I'm very glad that nobody is a dissenter of, of a huge amount, uh, not even one, um, that's actually going to disagree or strongly disagree with that possibility. Okay, it's closed. The figures, um, ready to share? Out we go. Okay, so 33% are happy to wait and see. Um, we're going to ask this question again. You may have gathered that at the end of the session. 29% agree. That's good. Whacking, great big majority, 38% strongly agree so okay let's go along with where, where let's take this along rapidly and see how far we can uh, how far we can go with with, with the other percentages and get, and get them along I personally believe that it has to I genuinely believe that we have to change the way we buy stuff for all sorts of extraordinary reasons okay so let's get controversial what is community buying let's start with well what is community buying not it's definitely not this. Oh my goodness me. I honestly, I'm not going to judge you if you use it, but it's a hideous business model. That and the other systems of vouchers. Um, it's definitely not this. Okay. This whole thing of collective switching, yeah, built and based on a very, very flawed model, and it will never be perfected. Now, I'm not saying nothing good comes from it, but I believe me, there is not one group out there created by a big squit. There's lots of collectives that have been collect that have been created by uh, collective purchasing, collective switching, etc. But they have not achieved what they thought they were going to. It's definitely not this. Okay. It's definitely not send you off to do stuff and attack other corporations. Or and it's definitely not comparing markets, etc. and um, making those websites lots of money with their commissions. This is what it's all about. Very simply, it's about the power of the group. When a group of people come together, they simply can achieve anything. And this is one of my favorite uh, pictures, and it's a real window and a real insight into exactly what community buying is all about. Now, imagine that you're invited to come as a group to have something amazing, like an aerial photo taken of you. You've got no idea what it's for or what the outcome is going to be. But effectively, you've come together as a group. You're going to do something together, and everybody being there helps everybody else create something. And what is the outcome? This is extraordinary. I love this love heart. Now, it could only have happened with everybody else. Okay, so if the, the 500 over there at the top left bit of the heart hadn't turned up, well, we wouldn't have a full heart, would we? The point really is, is as soon as you come together as a group, you can't actually know what the outcome could be. So um, it could all be a, it could could be about the, the, the love we share as as a, as a group like that, or it could just be other extraordinary things. There's some real magic when a group comes together. So community buying is about the power of the group and where it can go. Why is it important? Interesting enough, locality posed that question in this webinar for me. Why is it important? Okay, well, you know, when an archbishop gets involved in, let's face it, politics, and um, I strongly agree that they should, and is saying stuff like this, and what he's really saying is, that, of course, we've had food banks for a long time, but there's proliferation of food banks, and people who you wouldn't expect to be going to food banks has an extraordinary insight into where our society is, and therefore, where our communities are. Now, as I said, it does get political. Um, but I think that the really important point about this is that a community buying group is a political statement in the same way that that is. I will continue. How to do it. You have to flip archaic thinking. I love the word flip. It's all about flipping thinking. So when I say archaic thinking, I'm talking about business strategies, old century ways of doing business. You have to flip that archaic thinking and you have to kick down and kick at. And I could end that sense in many, many different ways. But really, you know, current economic thinking, massive financial institutions, uh, corporations and the way they do, you have to kick up business models as they stand and you have to really take them on. Whose advert is this? It doesn't actually matter, but I just, I just know that lots of people would instantly know. It doesn't matter which corporation it is. It's a brilliant insight into the way a corporation keeps its consumer small. It's actually telling you, 
on this picture. You're small. You've got a small world of your own, and we're going to keep you separate. And that one over there, that's separate as well. And them there, they're separate. And they really like it when you come and buy from them, and they can mark it at you separately. Because when you're on your own, of course, you are weak. When you're on your own, you can be seduced into consumerism. When you're on your own, you end up spending too much. So, how do we flip that model? It's pretty obvious. It's all about the middle ground. So imagine this. I don't mean no man's land. That would be far too much of a, of a, of a war. We're talking about a battle. The middle ground. Who owns the middle ground between the consumer and the corporation? What's really interesting is that it's called customer facing by a corporation. Personally, I call it customer face off. Mahatma Gandhi got it right. Um, this is a very, very new idea, but you can get organized. First, they ignore you. This is the corporation. Uh, this, is, this has been a history of where I've, I've bought from. Then they ridicule you. Then they fight you, and yeah, then you win. So you win the middle ground. And he's absolutely right. It's all about getting organized. And when this guy and his guys got organized, imagine who owns the middle ground. Now, I know I'm using sledgehammers to crack nuts, but it is, in my opinion, that important. The way we shop. The way we buy stuff, in my opinion, has to change. Okay, and what really is interesting is that once it does, this is what happens. So imagine that's me on one side and the supplier on the other side. We are fighting in theory for the territory, the air, etc. But you know what? Underneath it all, you come to an agreement. Because imagine this for a second. A thousand people want to buy the same thing, community buying community group purchase for anything and we're going to come to those sort of things and they go to the market does the corporation want to speak to you well not really they'd like a thousand people on their own thank you very much they can charge them more they can seduce them as i said but what are they going to do they're generally not going to say go away because they know that you're going to buy it so you're going to go and buy it from their competitor and I've got some very interesting examples of how that has happened but so underneath it all once you get through the bravado and the battle you come to an agreement and when you start working together it's quite extraordinary okay I have a question right now right now what would you like to cover in this event if I can in the next 30 so minutes because if I get some interesting responses that I can cover and half cover I will add them into where this rather organically scripted um, set of picture stories go so over to you So at this point, we'd like to encourage people to use the question box on the right hand side of the screen. As Chris said, please let us know what you would like us to focus the next part of the webinar on. And I can see we're getting some questions in here, Chris. People are asking, a few people are asking how to get started. Um, also got, uh, yep, Tina, Tina's just asked, how can you get started? I've also got people asking of, Good examples. Um, Joe's asking, have you got any examples of how it galvanizes communities? Um, and the questions are slowing down now. That's all we've had for the moment. So I'll hand back to you now, Chris. Okay, galvanizing communities, um, how to get started, good examples. We'll cover all three of those, and I've written all those down. So Tina and Joe, thank you very much. Come into all of that. Brilliant. I've just thank got you. Two okay. quick, Sorry. quick I've got two quick more questions that have come through. So the best way to promote the services, that's from Claire. Yeah. And I've also got, if political, can a parish council take a lead? That's from Simon. Um, am I all right to give you two more? Yep. Um, I've got Leslie asking, how much work is it? Jackie asking, is it just utilities? And one final one from Ben. Can I use this to win business and network? So I'll hand back to you, Chris. Mm. Um, that's an interesting last question. Very quickly, I'll cover that. Do you know what? If a corporation comes to the community and wants to 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 to, to market its stuff from the community point of view with the community, then then absolutely you can market your opportunity. But it has to be on the on the terms of the community. Um, getting started, we'll cover. Um, good examples, we'll cover. Galvanizing community, definitely. How much work is it? Is it that really does uh, depend on the product, and we'll cover that too. Is it political? Let's just nail this one, and I'll finish this one. When I say it's pol a political statement, I don't mean it's attached to anybody who actually is in a party, etc. Um, I rant about anybody who's in power. It wouldn't matter which one it was. Um, it, what I mean is, it's a statement 
of politic that is actually aimed at those people in authority who should be taking notice of something. And things have changed within government because of this sort of thing. So DEC, for example, getting involved in the whole per th thing of collective switching, even though they got it almost completely wrong, does actually mean that they do listen to community. So when I say it's a political statement, it's not I'm attaching my name and my vote to something, I'm actually saying it's really right up there in the face of government. So parish councils are a brilliant way to lead this. What can a group group by? Hmm. Okay, clearly renewables and solar. These are this is a phenomenally important thing to group by and not buy on your own. It, you so many people get it wrong when they buy something like this on their own. And when you buy as a group, of course you get a phenomenally reduced price. That's very obvious. But more important than that, you get your questions answered, you get to the right suppliers, you get um, all of your customer service sorted after because you know what? Service goes up when you group buy, not down. Because they don't want to upset so many so many uh, consumers in one go. Okay, so rapidly through some more. Clearly, obviously, composters and um, uh, composters and water butts are particularly good. Necessities I'm talking about. Probably not going to do Mauritius flights, but you never know. Um, food. Okay, there's some great models out there of already people doing organic boxes, organic food, growing and selling and buying it together. Free from. Does anybody buy gluten free? Oh my goodness me, it's ridiculously expensive. Three pounds a loaf. I mean, loaves are pretty much too expensive as it is, but three pounds a loaf. Can you imagine the margin in that when you group buy it? <laughs> okay, group buying mobility scooters. There you go. And look, they, they, they are um, part time buggies as well. Yeah, that is uh, my disabled mother and my grandchild. Um, it has to be personal. Group buying has to be personal. Uh, what about printers? We did that a uh, group buying scheme for a, a local bunch of businesses. Got rid of 80 of those. And of course, the things that are attached to the things that you're buying. So you buy again, so the things that go in them. Um, um, something unusual. Uh, a, a Tetra, a Tetra. Um, uh, lamp that you take to pieces and old people find fantastically exciting putting together because it lights up as you put it together. We group bought those for some old people's homes. What about smart cars? What about um, the best dishwashing uh, 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 dishwashing uh, soap? Yeah, eco-friendly uh, refills for your coffee. What about energy saving products? Yeah, we could group by those. Um, that one's going to save you between 50 and 80 pounds, 80, 90 pounds a year if you install that and buy it once at a group price. Extraordinary. Spectacles, contact lenses, paper, stationery. Oh yeah, utilities. Of course, we'll get there eventually. Of course, we do energy. Of course, it's all about energy too. But you know what? It's so much more than bunching together to buy your energy, even though that is the mainstay of what we personally do. There are all sorts of organizations out there doing more and more group buying of different products. Question is, what do you want to buy? Over to you, Luke. Are you there? Okay. Oh, sorry. I'm hoping Slight that you're going to be fitting some questions with the audio. and sending Luke. Sorry. So if people want to use the question box on the right-hand side to let us know what they would like to buy, we can get some more information from Chris. So I can see people... Anything coming in? Yeah, we've got people asking about groceries. Um, so Ruby asks about food. Got lots of questions coming through. Someone's asking about stationery, that's Tina. Jackie's asking about oil. And Tina Thompson's asking about printer cartridges. I've got Joe Hume asking about garden equipment to share with the community. Um, one about energy. Um, and I've got Claire asking about oil. Okay, um, am I back? You are, it's back to you now, Chris, to answer some of okay. those. So oil, we're definitely gonna do, um, we'll come to that. Um, I've already mentioned that you undoubtedly can, can group together to, to buy stationary food, groceries. Groceries we can definitely do. We can do all sorts of things. We've got an amazing discount card that we found for people in a rather large supermarket. Um, garden equipment is a great one, you know, um, because that comes with a club. And I'm going to come on to the club uh, basis later of what people have got existing out there. So I will come to all of those as we go. What's really important is when you come together, you have to follow through on the promises you've made. So the group has to do what it said it would do. That's obviously down to the people who lead it. 
and you, you know what, if you're going to offer savings, you really need to go out and find savings. So how much can a community buying scheme group save? Well, okay, let's just very quickly talk about oil. In these three parishes across four years, 120 families saved £82,397 between them. Now, I don't know what you think, but that's £82,397 that stayed in the right community and didn't disappear out into the corporation's pocket. It was extraordinary. We'll come to what effect that had on the community. Okay, what about very urban communities? Because, of course, I know you're, you, I'm talking to a real cross sex of people. I don't even get much more urban than that. Um, okay, what about if... As a result of uh, doing a presentation, a five-minute presentation at a locality symposium, somebody went back to their community and in a block of flats very similar to this, put in place a nappy buying scheme. They persuaded somebody at the bottom or near to the bottom of that, that unit to actually buy in lots of nappies and they persuaded their community through their community organizing that it would be a cracking idea if everybody, young mums, single mums, very cosmopolitan area, lots of different uh, speaking nationality, families coming in, not a great deal of money, go and buy their nappies together. It seemed very obvious. Okay, here's a question. Instead of going off to the supermarket themselves and not negotiating the price but paying the price on, on, on the shelf, obviously, um, these, these things were delivered in together into one unit and then they bought them as a, so they bought them as a group and then they bought them individually out of there. Here's my question. How much do you think it was possible for those families to save a week? And the poll is going to open. All right, so you've got three options. Pretty straightforward. Two, four, six quid a week. Um, think about it. If it was six quid a week, that would be £300 a year. A lot of money, isn't it? If it was four quid a week, that would be 200 quid a year. And uh, obviously at two. Okay, so um, interesting enough, nobody's, no, not very many people are interested in the two pounds a week, a uh, hundred pounds a year. Not, you wouldn't be impressed with that if you were nappy buying in that area, fair enough. Um, only 5% of people said that. 30% um, of people said six pounds a week. 65% of people said four pounds a week. Here's the facts. Facts are, it was six pounds a week, 300 pounds a year simply by coming together and buying one product, which is an absolute necessity for so many people. Now here's the next slide. Now they are a group, I say, let the magic begin. What else can they purchase as a group for the necessities of life when you've got children of that age? It's pretty obvious. There are so many things. There's just five very obvious examples that are, you know, a massive expense. And I don't know about dummies being a massive expense, but I know that if you lose them, they're pretty desperate. So you have to replace them pretty quickly. But the point really is that whatever your young ones need, why not group buy it? It seems completely preposterous, actually, when you think about it to trundle along with a pram, with a buggy to a supermarket and haul it back. Why not do it together? OK, so let's that's so that so so. Very briefly, that's 300 quid a year. I'm going to come back to it to, to what happened in that community, uh, talk about the galvanizing. Um, so let's talk about lighting a fire with this product, okay? Sometimes you have to go the holistic route, right? So this is a bag of rock salt. Um, if you live rurally, that was the urban model, um, one of the urban models back there. If you live rurally and therefore off gas quite often um, and therefore in difficult places to get out of, quite often you need a bag of these, literally this of this stuff, for when it freezes or snows, just literally to get off your drive, yeah, so actually you can get out to the road and get to work and get on with life, and so um, in my community, I knew, and the various communities around me, I knew that people did buy a lot of these, or they, they went and um, took what was in the, the boxes at the bottom of the hills that they weren't supposed to, because when it freezes and the boxes at the bottom of the hills are suddenly empty, they then still can't get to work, but what's really interesting about this is that we decided we would group buy it, okay, so we got it delivered, on pallet loads, and yes, onto a back of a lorry. Now that isn't Bruce for, for, Forsyth, okay, but that is a little old lady doing the lifting, which seems a little harsh. I wasn't involved in that one, but hey, there you go. So what we also did was we did a, a last mile delivery system with this product, and so we got some young, young, young chaps uh, between the ages of 16 and 25 on the neats list, which yes, I know we have a whole section of society for people we can't, we've let down and we can't find a job for, which seems uh, genius to me. Uh, so no education, no employment, no training. They've got their own label themselves. And you know what? These were good kids. And so they delivered these bags of rocks around uh, the community via wheelbarrows for the last mile of delivery. 
So I'm moving swiftly on to another question. It was exactly the same bag as I'd researched at one of the big DIY shops, which they were selling for £13.50. Now you had to drive 12 miles to go pick it up. And if you had children or if you're old, etc., you had that added problem of what do I do with my children or I'm old and I can't lift it. I've given it back to the car, etc. And of course you had to drive it back. And then of course you had to get it out of your car. Um, it seemed like an awful lot of inconvenience for one or two bags. So the whole concept of having it delivered on a pallet load, pallets by pallet load, um, and then having it delivered around the community seemed like a great idea and it worked extraordinarily well. So I have a question. What would you have paid for that same £13.50 bag? Should we open another poll? Okay. You got three options. Would you have paid £6.50? Would you have paid £10.50? Because clearly there's got to be a saving, isn't there? Or would you have actually been happy to pay slightly more? All right, now I've asked a slightly different question because I've asked what you would have paid, obviously, all right, rather than what you think they paid. So I maybe should have pointed that out. But interestingly enough, we're at a majority of £10.50. So the group's made a saving, but it's a, an awful lot less than me and Q. And because of the huge additional um, less, uh, less stress of actually getting it back yourselves, you are getting a hell of a benefit because it is £10.50. That's a saving of £3.50. Well, interestingly enough, this is how it worked. This is how the money worked. All right. When we pallet load bought those bags, we bought them for less than £4 a bag. Delivered. When the community group and Neat shared over £1.50 per bag for a bit of profit, so we actually made some money and the Neat's kids could be paid 50p a bag for delivery, we added some money. The VAT man had to get his, obviously. It was total £6.50. £6.50. Hmm, that seems extraordinary to me. I don't know about you. Um, talk about galvanising a community. Here's one for you. Um, Mrs. Bowen's 82. She really can't get out of the house very much because her husband is very, very poorly. For the first time ever, she was sharing a cup of coffee with what you would term as a hoodie, probably, in her front uh, kitchen, at the kitchen table, with two, get, two kids who, who probably were, were, were to her intense, but uh, were going to be called hoodies, um, because they delivered two bags of rock salt into her back garden. It cost her less than the price of one from a big store. I don't know what you think, but I'm thinking this community buying might actually work. So I have a question. Have you got any questions? I'm open to all questions. Keep them coming. So if you have any further questions for Chris, please send them in via the box on the right and I shall let Chris know what your questions are. So I can see here Ben is asking, he's not looking to bulk buy, but he has a business and he's looking to bulk sell. Is that something you could help him with or give him more information about? Um, let's have a look here. I can see Tina's asking, what scale do you need to be to be what's the critical mass? Leslie's asking, does it work better when people know each other? Um, I've got Nigel asking, how to get suppliers to agree prices for a buying group? Sarah is asking, how do you know who to connect to regarding the large shops and anyone's got any more questions before we close this question section what was the last Sarah question Sarah's asking how do you know who to connect to regarding the large shops uh, love that question um, okay very quickly Ben group selling absolutely um, as I said earlier if you if you package it correctly and go to the community group and, and see it from their angle with a proposition that they want. Because what's really interesting on this, um, I maybe should have said earlier, on the attendees list today were some very large corporations, uh, um, some very large councils, some very large housing associations, um, some community groups already out there doing something similar, lots of community groups, uh, lots of community organizers, so lots of individuals as well. So this appeals to everybody and is actually open to everybody. Because what is a community after all? A community in my office is four people. We buy the same thing. We're a community buying group. Um, a community where I live is 300 people. We buy the same thing, and we're a community, community buying group. Um, you know, Tesco's probably got 20,000 staff. If their staff bought all together, then they would be a community buying group. It, it doesn't. You can't 
you know, necessarily define a community. Um, critical mass, oh, I love that question. It really goes from product to product. So if two people came to me and said, I want to buy the funkiest, most amazing Mercedes, I think we'd go and get a price for amazing Mercedes that they couldn't possibly get, put in only two. Interestingly enough, we bought oil uh, for one person on their own and got an amazing price when, when, um, because there's two companies who want the order. So a critical mass depends on product as well, but it doesn't necessarily matter. If you're talking about something like food, for example, maybe energy on a smaller basis of oil, then 10 to 20 is a cracking place to start. Uh, the question, do you need to know each other? Hmm, that's genius. Thank you for that question. The answer is, it really helps. Now, you, 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 you probably get your critical mass by people bringing together people who know each other or have a commonality and a link to each other that is that is very strong um, because there's that knowledge and that knowing you get that loyalty too and you get the trust and the belief and that's very important and this is where big collective schemes have fallen down because they've not created a group where people know each other and do something together so flip back to the, um, the the young families in the in the in the block of flats saving on their nappies they're a group now and they could become anything so I mentioned they could buy lots of stuff for young families together they could buy anything together as a group they could go and get membership at uh, swimming pools reduced probably as a group they could go out and do a deal with a taxi company for example is there's anything that group could do so it's where you start from the commonality and the knowledge is really important okay how do you get to the right person in the company again completely you know, depends on the corporation and therefore the size of it and therefore sorry so the, the the product and therefore the corporation the size of it but but think about this when we bought iPads where, who do you go and speak to first I mean it's pretty obvious isn't it you just do one thing you phone Apple you phone Apple and Apple when you get through to the right person because in my head it's the social responsibility department because we're a major community buying venture and it's all about social and community and environment so who are you going to speak to in that organization definitely them in fact all large corporations go straight to the CSR department forget about buying and buyers it's much much more powerful if you go that route um, Apple said yeah we don't do discounts I'm gonna to come to that story in a minute um, okay so so who how do you get prices from organizations? Let, let's come to that because we're going to talk a roadmap at the end. Um, I may well have missed one off that list of questions, but I've got a few more I'm going to cover towards the end anyway. Okay, the community impact. All right, so I'm giving you a rush through this. I get that. So we've talked about what type of products you could do. Actually, it could be anything. We talked about how you bring a group together or what the group could, could be, but it has to be about community and nothing else. Um, or start from the base of the community. We've talked about how you flip models and you rethink um, the archaic. What impact, though, can it actually have on the community that you're talking about? Right, so remember these guys? Okay, if you get 20 orders on one truck and it's delivered into your village on one truck and goes around that village and then delivers all of those orders, doesn't matter, this was heating oil, but it doesn't actually matter what it is. Could be Sainsbury's shopping deliveries, obviously and then it turns off to a different release and does the same of course that's much better than having 20 separate trucks come in with 20 separate orders and 10 20 separate journeys think of it the carbon emission reduction in delivery is vast the costs to the supplier remember that handshaking underneath the ground you know suppliers get it when you explain to them in 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 uh, well very short uh, words of a of, of few syllables obviously um, that wasn't meant to be totally disrespectful to all supplies, by the way. Um, but it, but I guess what I'm saying is it has it because it's, it's such a change for them. All right, okay. So moving on. But what does it do also for the community? Well, we've reduced our truck journeys into the village, three villages, by 90%. That has to have made those villages safer. It must have made those villages more sustainable, reduced carbon emissions, and of course because of the groups buying. It's brought down the costs as well. So, if 82,000 stays in the community, that stays in those families over a four year period, I don't know what they spend that money on. I know they buy other stuff with us, but I don't know what they spent that money on. Um, all I know is that that must have made that community a bit happier, mustn't it? So, let's talk about happiness. It might be tough times in that building, I don't know. Um, it might be tough times trying to afford those nappies, but 300 quid a year because they change the way they buy something they have to buy. Do you think they might just be a bit happier? What if you find them three more ways to save a couple of hundred quid a year? 
What if you get to a thousand pounds of savings by buying necessities and staple products for those families because you generated a group? You only need a thousand people in the community to be saving a thousand pounds to get to a million quid worth of savings. It, it's extraordinary. Do you know what? Even if it's four products that they only save 50 quid a year on only, 50 quid a year on, and they're saving 200 quid a year, this still can be a massive impact. Now, if they're saving 300 quid a year and they never do another thing, when they go buy their nappies and they pick them up together, do you think they might have conversations? Do you think that coffee mornings might be more fun? Do you think people might know each other a bit more in the block of flats or in the community? Do you think that people feel like they belong to something? I guarantee people feel like they belong to something. It does impact the community. It is extraordinary. Now, remember I said Apple do discounts? Well, they offered me one or two percent. So I trundled off to a reseller. We were buying iPads for an old people's organization who wanted a few. And as a result of the deal, we got a much better deal than Apple actually give in terms of the protection because they've got a next day um, strip out service if that product goes wrong. Not if you put your tea on it, admittedly, but if it actually goes wrong. And we got them a 15 percent discount. Now, 18 months ago, that was a massive discount for an Apple because they price protect. But no, 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 let's not talk about that. Let's talk about the community impact. Okay, you're looking at the community here. You're looking at the person that they could afford to have for an hour within the price to come and teach them how to use the iPad, a person that at the time was on the needs list. I gave them a venture. And you're looking at a man who adores his wife, but doesn't much like the fact that she sits with the TV on so loud because she's deaf. He doesn't really like sitting there. Now he can. Now he can listen to his iPad independently while he's sat holding his wife's hand. Now he can actually Skype his grandchildren in Australia because he knows how to use an iPad. It's extraordinary. Now Charles will never swallow again. He's got a very aggressive throat cancer. But life got better because we went and group bought him something. And do you know what? That wasn't our idea. That came from the community. And why does it all work? Because it's about the power of the group. And um, I was sat in a meeting yesterday, I was going to come to in a second, which was extraordinary. And this guy asked me why a certain other group hadn't managed to do something that we had. And I just looked and I went, it's about the power of the group. Uh, I can't exactly explain it. I just know that when you bring people together in a group from a community buying point of view, extraordinary things can happen. And that means huge community impact. Okay, I'm going to talk about community buying gone extreme. I'm going to talk very personally about what we've achieved at Community Buying Unlimited in now our fifth winter. Community Buying Unlimited began as a completely, well, by mistake, a serendipitous opportunity. Um, 20 people came together to buy their heating oil, which is extraordinarily important in off gas communities. It's like if you've never bought it, it's like buying your electricity and putting it in a tank at the end of your garden for three months, three months worth of electricity and you put it at the end of your garden. How preposterous is that? And yes, it is. Heating oil is preposterous. We still have it delivered on a truck in this carbon horrific age. It seems extraordinary. However, that aside, 20 people came together on September of September of 2009 and five winters on, we now buy for over 22,000 people across the country. It's been an extraordinary success story. Believe me, it's come with its tough times. It's come with its great times. Okay, I want to send you to a link later. This is your homework. We can't make a video uh, work in this. In fact, we probably don't really have time to watch the three and a half, four minutes now. But I would love to send you away to look at this link and think about the relationships that have been developed with suppliers, with third parties like the housing association that we're working for, with the consumer and the community group member themselves and how that's changing, how we've dragged this lady out of fuel poverty, how in actual fact we've probably stopped her from being one of the 31,000 next winter because she was on the downward spiral that people go down when they fall into the tragedy of serious fuel poverty and having no one around them to support them. Recently widowed, when we met her, she was really struggling. You'll see from the video, she is a different person to one who's really struggling. She understands her energy and she's getting lots of help. So look at the relationships, look at the positive outcomes from this that have been achieved. And to win an amazing book as a prize, and do you know what? I would give one away to every single person if you can email me the one key phrase in that video. So this is your homework. Please do your best to win an amazing book called The Go-Giver, which is extraordinary and is all about community and would be a real insight for anybody thinking they need to be starting a community buying group. 
please do some homework and go and have a look. Now you're going to get these, these slides from Luke afterwards and we're going to send you a transcript of these slides. So poor Faye is currently writing away um, at her laptop listening to this and she is very excited obviously to send you the transcript. So you can't miss out and I do want you to, to, to try and win that book off me. I'm looking for the one key phrase from somebody in that video that sums up the whole point of what we're doing. How did this all happen? I'm not going to show the picture again, but it is all about the power of the group. It's about collaboration. It's about putting the community first. It's about con never giving up. And it's about building trust and loyalty and belief with those people who've come to belong and come to be part of something. And whilst you're doing that, you're looking after some very vulnerable people in society, which at the same time, interesting enough, the critical mass, as somebody mentioned earlier, of getting to a, num a number big enough to, for a heating oil order means you also save money of people who don't actually need to save the money. I buy for 13 or 14 lords and ladies, but because I do and add their volume, we help some extraordinary vulnerable people. That's about communities working together. Okay, did it work? Well, has it worked so far? I think probably you can guess that from 22,000 people, and that's ongoing and growing, um, that it's worked. And all the organisations we work with, AGK, all the rural community councils, um, district councils, localities themselves, housing associations, it, it really has worked. But at the end of the day, how are you ever going to me um, measure anything? This is how it worked. Five winters in, uh, this is our fifth winter, sorry, just before this fifth winter, September, we went over this as a total savings for everybody in the group. I don't know what you think, but if we'd piled that up, that'd be a big old stack. Pounds at a time, sometimes very few pounds at a time, sometimes lots more. We broke the one million pound barrier for our membership in September. And we're excited by that. And I think our second million pounds may be an awful lot faster than four years. Okay, what were the challenges? Now, there are challenges, clearly, with everything. There are challenges for you to have enough time in the day to get on this webinar. There are challenges when you ride a horse of, you know, how do you get on it, how do you stay on it, and how's the best way to get off it. This, I would suggest, is not the best way to get off your horse. Now, what's really extraordinary about this is a true insight into courageousness and never giving up. Now, the good news is this person did not headbutt the ground quite as you might think they were about to. The amazing insight into this is that she, yes, she, got back on that horse, no, 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 not that one, couldn't catch it, a different horse 40 minutes later and rode in the next race. Now, commitment, I'd pretty much say so. Dedication, never giving up. Believe me, this picture is an insight into running a community buying group. Um, you will head back the ground on a, on a regu regular basis because it can be tough. And at times, you will feel like you are being stampeded by horses. But the real challenges are twofold. Remember the middle ground? They are both the corporation and the consumer. Getting through to the corporation and working with them closely is really tough, but you do get there. Sometimes it's even tougher to get to the consumer. Really? Can you really save that sort of money? But I've been told since 1945 in the Marshall Plan that I have to buy on my own and I have to buy an awful lot of stuff and I have to keep buying and I should listen to marketing and corporations are run, uh, are, uh, it's okay for them to run my life, etc. A community buying group, how can they look after what I need to buy? Believe me. Um, it doesn't matter, some people you put the figures in front of and you, you show them the feedback, they still can't come by with the community because they can't let go of everything they've been miseducated by in terms of by commercialism. Um, by the way, for the corporations who are listening, I know you're all very nice people really um, who work in them. Okay, so here's the third really big challenge though. See that wheel over there? It works rather well, doesn't it? So why redesign it? And that would be something I would suggest that went wrong with collective switching in particular. Redesigning a model that works and redesigning it badly is really not a good idea. It comes up with a flawed concept. Okay, so this slide is the slide that actually instigated the nappy buying scheme when I first showed Terry via local, local, localities symposium um, two years ago, I think, two, a bit, two, two and a bit years ago. I got, I've repeated it verbatim because somebody's asked for, you know, clubs and Paris councils and galvanizing communities and critical mass, etc. It's as simple as this. There's loads of communities out there already. Don't go reinvent them. Go and work with them. We already do ridiculous numbers of things together. What an amazing idea it would be, of course, if you harness the power of those groups and they started doing something else in addition. Now, it doesn't mean that you can't create groups for new products or stuff, but 
fish where the fish are. Um, when we moved to our new office last July, there were 150 companies down that street. Uh, we basically went out and just went, okay, let's create a community buying group for a bunch of companies. There is no stationery supplier there. Let's go and buy their stationery. You saw the picture of the printer earlier. Um, basically, we sold, I think, 80 of those out to those companies because it was the right time, it was the right price, and they liked the idea of buying stuff together. We haven't even scratched the surface of that. So it doesn't have to be three people living down a cold sack together. It doesn't even have to be people who dig their garden together, although these are great. It can be any type of group and community. But like I said, fish where the fish are. They're already there. It feels like local activism gone global impact for me. So I know what you're thinking. <laughs> okay, I don't really, but I think I know what some of you are thinking. Uh, how do I get started? It's already been asked. How do we actually get going? What do we do? Um, somebody came up to me at the end of an action camp for locality, said, I've been in one of your seminars before. I get buzzed up. I go away and I go, what am I going to do next? Brilliant. We've come up with a roadmap. Now, we're not coming with this roadmap. Okay, this is a roadmap. Um, this is the route from my office to Sainsbury's where I get my lunch quite regularly um, because I have an amazing discount card, obviously. And what's really interesting about this is there is a best route from me to Sainsbury's. There are lots of other routes, but there's a best route. And the roadmap suggests that that is the best route. Now, of course, you have to get to the road and make sure you don't get run over. And you have to go over that nasty big road and definitely make sure you don't get run over. And you have to negotiate the gate to get into Sainsbury's and you have to get through the front door, all of that stuff. But the point is, that is the map. So what we've developed is a roadmap. And I am for the very first time online telling anybody what it's called. It's called Mazitas. And I've got um, another person uh, in my office who sat uh, watching this, and she doesn't know this next bit, um, but she's been working very, very hard on this. And her, light, her face will probably be lighting up because I can't see it at the moment, um, because um, I'm about to announce something very exciting. We are going to launch Mazitas. We've been working on it a long time. What is it? It's a place. It's a place that you can go, anybody can go, to start the community group that they want to. Now, I'm not saying you have to. I, please believe me, this is not a, a one pitch sale at you about how brilliant my company is and where it should go. This is about the phenomenon that's community buying and there's lots of other people out there doing community buying. I just happen to be doing it in a certain way and we've generated a place for you to go and lots of other people who actually want to go and create new buying groups or already have new brands, talk about the products they're buying and what they want to buy, talk about the challenges they're getting to. Hmm, it's extraordinary. Do you know what? It's a place where you can actually go and create a database. You can actually manage that database. You can actually talk about all the sort of things that you want to buy to that database. You can contact that database. And do you know what? It's even a place where you can control the orders, place the orders, work out the savings, etc. Now, this would be something that you could do yourselves within this roadmap, and it would be something that would be private to you. We've just created that space. Now, we're going to do a launch uh, next month on a very important day online, and it'll be a free launch. So I'm going to invite you at the end of this to this launch. But for all those people who leave my sessions and go, I'm buzzed up, what do I do next? For all those people who have said, how do I get started? For all those people of, you know, what are the logistics? How would I reach buyers? How would I reach members? Where would we accumulate? What can we do next? This is your solution. And we're very excited about it. So I'm coming to the last two to three minutes of slides. And so I'm going to ask one more question. And the poll is, what do you think now? Can community buying change the way we buy stuff in the UK? Well, I want to say the world. Can, it, can this change the way we buy everything? Now, I'm not probably talking about your wedding dress. Okay, We could get some discounts, maybe. I'm not talking about the bespoke thing that you desperately need for certain things. I am talking about the things that you have to buy. I include things like holidays and cars and insurance. I include things like home contents, uh, sorry, sorry, uh, anything around the home, mortgages, obviously, eventually, phones, laptops. I include pretty much anything that's not a bespoke purchase. In my opinion, it's bonkers to go buy stuff to pay the advertised price and I'm going to give you an example of what happened this morning. I went online to one of the um, 
suppliers for websites to actually buy my websites for something and I figured that once I'd got to about three or four I could actually phone up and not buy them online but negotiate a price down and what happened of course I negotiate the price down no price in my opinion that's advertised is the bottom line now what's really interesting about the poll is that it comes to 101% I've only just noticed 430 and 67% sounds like 101% to me but what's really interesting is that we've gone up from 40 something to 67% of people actually saying they strongly agree that we could potentially change the way we buy stuff in the UK through the phenomenon that is community buying okay I'm excited thank you very much for that response so as I come towards the end the possibilities are <coughs> excuse me <coughs> typical I would start coughing now the possibilities are infinite come and join in in whatever form it may be as a member, as a new group, as starting your own thing and coming and talk to us about it. Just come and join in. This man, I guarantee, would have joined in. He would have grasped the, the enormous good sense in community buying. And do you know why I got an insight from that? Because this is my favorite quote from Einstein. He once said, I know of two things that are infinite, the universe and human stupidity. And then he added, hmm. So he was pretty sure that there was infinity, infin infinity, infinity in human stupidity. Now, I'm not going to say people who buy on their own are stupid. They've been marketed to for a long time and it's the accepted norm. All I know is, all I know is that the good sense way forward is undoubtedly to buy stuff together. Okay, community buying. Did we flip your thinking? You were listening to Chris Pomfret. Uh, he is the founder of Community Buying Unlimited. You can contact him here. You can follow and visit him here. And I'm going to leave you with a call to action. And that is that if you email us, we will send you the link for the free online launch of Mazitas The Roadmap. 11 a.m. Monday the 10th of March. 2014. It's an extraordinarily important date because the young lady who's helped me drag it kicking and screaming to the place where it is ready to go leaves us to go traveling for 11 weeks before she starts her university degree and I will very proudly have her and I and maybe some others present Mazitas Roadmap to the masses waiting to see so whatever questions you've now got please email me I'm, I'm raring to go but if you want to press pause there and go how do I get started then this is your next date. You're busy people. I massively appreciate your time. Thank you for your feedback and your questions. If there were any left unanswered, please come and email me now. We will be sending the slides I know from Luke and I know we'll be sending the uh, TypeScript of what, some of what I went on about. So thank you very much for listening. I've been very proud to, to, to explain some tips and and some success, success stories on where we're going. And that, for me, is the essence of community buying, the power of the group. I'm now going to hand over.